Hello and welcome to Life After Neymar, episode 21 of my Santos career mode. And like I said in the last episode, I was looking to find some regens that, um, from for players that have retired or maybe retiring in the future. If you don't know, um, on career mode, every time a player retires, there's a regenerated player, which is that player just reincarnated basically on your FIFA career mode save. So I went looking through and I found a few that I might be interested in. Obviously, I've only been through one season and some change, but I looked to see if there were any good ones I could find. And the first one that I could find is either a um, regen for Zay Roberto or Juninho, the legendary free kick guy um, who played for Olympique Lyonnais for a while. Um, I couldn't find any of these guys on the game, so... This is a guy I'm very interested in, um, Cicero Vitor Vital de Silva, that's quite a name. Um, he does have a 5 star weak foot though, which is pretty nice, he looks like a, he's going to become a good passer of the ball, so we'll probably be scouting him a little bit more just to find out what all he's good at. Um, 18 years old, excuse me, so definitely someone I'm interested in, Tomas Musso who somehow plays for Kaiser Chiefs. He's 18, 4-star weak foot, 4-star skills. From Argentina, attacking midfielder, I'm almost positive he's the region of Juan Roman Riquelme. Um, and I found out Andrea Pirlo hasn't retired yet. I could sign him on a contract expiry. That'd be pretty interesting to have Andrea Pirlo playing for Santos. Um, let me know if I should do it. I'm kind of thinking about it, but... His stamina, not really there, 58 stamina. I might just wait until he retires, then I'll pick up his regen then. Um, Clarence Seydorf, another guy I was interested in. Um, he He's also available on... Um, you can pick him up for free when his contract runs out. However, I'm not going to do that. I'll probably wait until he retires when I try to find his regen at that point. If I feel like doing that, I don't know. Um, Pirlo is 76 overall. His passing stats will never be that low. Um, but thinking about that, I don't know if I will. We'll see. Um, Borges de Carvalho, he is actually the regen of Leo. Um, our left back that retired in the first season. So I'll probably be signing him later in this episode. It looks like he'd probably be better than the left back Caldera that we have now, the second choice guy. Lucas Becker, not really a... Name fit for a player from Argentina, but he is the regen of Javier Zanetti of uh, Inter Milan. He can play a wide variety of positions, right mid, right back, central midfield. Um, Ignacio Pusetto, I'm almost positive that this guy is the regen of Diego Forlan. So, I'm um, not sure what team that is he plays for. It might be in the Argentinian League. Um, Four-star weak foot, three-star skills. 5'11", 160 pounds. Ferther Moreno, Marino rather. Um, I'm pretty sure that he is the regen of Alessandro Del Piero. His work rates aren't that good, but uh, might be a good attacking midfielder though. 17-year-old uh, player. Definitely going to be looking into purchasing two or three of those players maybe. We'll see. Um, but anyway, there are two games in this episode. Um, it's about the length of a normal one though, but... Uh, anyway, our first game doesn't mean a whole lot, and our second game is the more important one. We played our basically our B-side here. Um, we were playing Goyas in the league. Of course, the second game is the second leg of the Copa do Brasil final against Cruzeiro. Um, that one means a lot more than this one, though. But early on, seventh minute, Leao Cittadini gets a shot away, and it goes a little bit behind Hugo. He couldn't really get to it, and they block the cross after that. And uh, they had some opportunities as well here. We just could not clear the ball. Don't know what Camillo Dominguez is doing there. They hit the bar, and we just cannot clear it. And we eventually will get it away here. Um, there's Rivera on the ball as we move the ball up the field. 45th minute here at the end of the first half. Not much going on, which is what normally happens um, when we play our B squad. Normally we're playing our B squad and we have a big game coming up in a couple days from then. You know, if we have a lot of matches going on. And normally when I play the B squad, I hate to call it the B squad, but that's pretty much what it is. When we play our, our not as talented players, if you will. But normally, 
it's nil nil one nil not a whole lot happens in these games so that's normally if I have a game that's one nothing or nothing nothing and not much goes on you can be you can be assured that it's probably because our our uh, second choice guys were in the game but Cicinho breaking down the wing gets some space here and crosses one in nicely finds Hugo with some space and he heads it home in the 62nd minute to get the first goal of this match Hugo not really in the run of form he was in last year he was playing very well in his first season which was weird because he's not very highly rated player I think he's only a 59 overall right now it was weird because he was a 54 overall and he was scoring left and right scoring with with his foot his left foot he has um, his shot power is basically his shot power and his heading abilities are his highest strengths if you will um, I don't know I hope he can become a bit better because he's a big guy perfect work rates I know it doesn't it's not supposed to matter on career mode but from my experience anyway it seems like it does um, even when you kinda try and change it seems like it doesn't always work that well but he's a real he's a good striker he could become something special in the years to come but I don't know we'll see um, so in the 90th minute here we're just trying to hold on to the ball and see this one out and get our three points we end up doing so and that's it for the first game we win that one one nil Hugo gets the goal to win us that one and we'll go right into the second and final game of this episode. Only two games in this episode with all the regen talk, I guess. Um, sixth minute here as we're trying to put an attack on here, trying to build something. Um, obviously, we won the first leg 2-0, so we were in pretty good position to win the Copa do Brasil and pick up a piece of silverware. And Rubinho with the incredibly OP near post shot there. Um, goalkeeper left a little bit of space and he paid for it. Nice little move by Rubinho to cut inside right here. Excuse me. Gets that one on his left foot and finishes nicely. Puts us up 3-0 on aggregate. Shortly after though, Cruzeiro would go on the attack to try and get one back and try and mount some sort of comeback here. Um, there's Diego Henning on the ball. It eventually will come back to him right here. No play it to Paulista. Not sure what Negrau was doing. He didn't react very nicely to that. And they would draw level in this match. 3-1 on aggregate, though. Um, they had a lot of opportunities that looked a lot like this one, where they'd kind of pass it around between the, their fullbacks and their midfielders on the wing, um, try and cross it in. They had a lot of opportunities like that. Um, they never really took advantage of any of these opportunities here. They're trying to find an open cross, and I don't know why they didn't take anything, but um, they had a lot of opportunities that looked a lot like that. Um, 89th minute here. I knew pretty. I knew pretty. Uh, I was pretty sure at this point that we had it in the bag. 3-1 on aggregate. 1-1 in the game. Didn't really matter. Um, there was no way they were going to score two goals in you know stoppage time especially with a minute stoppage time um, they'd get a free kick here though late in the match and Victorino would be the man to take it for Cruzeiro plays this one in it does get headed towards Negrau but it's an easy save for him and he'll boot it away and that will do it and we will take our first piece of silverware in this series we win the Copa do Brazil 3-1 to on aggregate and the Santos players celebrating little bit of revenge after getting knocked out in the Copa do Brazil a season before by Cruzeiro. So feels good to get a little bit of revenge on them, I guess. Also nice to pick up a piece of silverware. A trof our first trophy this episode of hopefully a few more later on down the road. I don't know where the confetti is coming from since it's an open stadium, but whatever. <laughs> I don't know. That's. I always thought that was kind of weird. There's not really any place to throw confetti straight down, but that's just me thinking, I guess. But uh, I'll show it right here, us with celebrating with our trophy. The Santos faithful making their trip all the way to wherever this neutral site happened to be. Both these games were, they weren't home and away. They were both played at the same place. 
So yeah, I left this all in here, and there it is. We win the Copa do Brasil. The players celebrating as we win ourselves our first trophy of the series in the 21st episode. We defeated Corinthians 5-2 on aggregate. In the next round, we defeated Paranaense 3-0. Um, then we beat Flamengo in the semifinal 3-1, and we did the same against Cruzeiro in the final, getting our revenge on the club that knocked us out a year before. So always good to pick up a bit of silverware, especially when there's only two trophies up for grabs in the Brazilian, you know, playing in Brazil, um, especially on FIFA anyway. Um, but we got an offer for Nobuhito Takashita from Halmstads um, because... He's not really, he only has, I think he has one star skills, and it's kind of hard to do anything with that. Two star skills I could live with, but, um, so yeah, we would also find, um, I'd also go back and sign uh, Leo's regen, so we'll be picking him up as another second, or probably a second choice left back, but that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, whatever, subscribe if you'd like. That's it for this episode, and I'll see you next time.